Are there hidden risks in the stock market right now? Today, we explain the concept of bonds traders versus stock traders. At the moment, we have a big divergence. Bonds traders are saying there's risks on the horizon. Stocks traders are saying, yeehaw, it's time to buy and YOLO everything. So should we believe these guys or should we believe these guys over the medium term? We'll be understanding that a little bit more along with our reactions to the retail sales numbers. 3% versus 1.9. It was a hot number and some pairs reacted the way you would think they should and others certainly did not. Well, welcome back everyone to The Daily Show. We've got the macro lead news, big levels, and of course the key zones that you need to be looking at at all the hottest stocks and cryptos and commodities right now coming up in the show. But let's begin with US stocks ending higher after the retail sales. Yeah, the retail sales came in pretty hot and it goes against the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve demand destructions what they want. At the same time, the American consumer is hot, hot, hot. 3% versus 1.9, already a big read. Then it came in even hotter than expected. Now you'd think stocks would have gone down from this because what did it do? It spiked interest rates and it held them at a higher pace with less cuts on the horizon. This is where the market is disconnecting in some ways and you've got to have a plan. We'll talk a little bit about plans and how you can set up for these types of things a little bit more effectively so that your mental state is more prepared for these massive rallies and drops that we're starting to see in these markets. It's kangaroo. So we've been requested this chart a few times. That's smart money versus dumb money. Firstly, it's not a timing tool. We've used it in conjunction with other concepts back in 2022 to find some significant areas such as the August rally and the April rally. This is where this chart really came into shine. At the moment, there's a huge disconnect between, let's call it inverted commas, dumb money, who's doing pretty well over the last four to six weeks, you and I usually, and smart money who have reduced their buying. So what's going on? Well, we're at a dangerous zone. Whether we break out, and we'll talk about that later on, and move towards the next key levels, that 4300, 4350 zone, we don't know yet. However, if it does occur and this continues to slide and this continues to slide down, eventually something's going to crack and you need to be prepared for that. The risks are now potentially to the upside more than they are to the downside. What about data? Well, data would state that around this time of the month in February, based on 1950 to 2022, we start to see weakness in the markets. At this stage, we've seen a little bit of consolidation. We haven't seen weakness. We also know that there are many risks not being taken into account. Up until recently, interest rate hikes and inflation was considered bad for the market. Even that isn't technically selling off the market correctly at the moment. So markets have basically started pricing in almost just perfect scenarios, and that's all they're doing. That's the time you need to be incredibly cautious. There's very little freaking out in these markets and retail traders continue to buy the dip at pretty astronomical rates. ERP is something that you want to be thinking about in the future, equity risk premium. I truly believe this is going to be the statement of the later half of 2023 into 24. So do remember that. And also remember that this is the time when we switch usually to the most powerful spiking of the VIX. So this is again, a historical chart taken over 20 year range. And it has been a little bit muddled due to the 2020, of course, big spikes that we had during the pandemic. But overall, we do see Q1 and Q3 being the points when you need to be most cautious. February, March tends to be that point where you need to be really, really on top of it. This isn't going to happen now, so I'll just skip over it because I've talked it enough. But basically, the Federal Reserve will eventually hit a premium peaking. Now, traditionally, when they've been raising rates, we've actually seen a lot of rallies in the past. Then we get sidelining, which is, of course, the Fed hitting terminal rates. We'll talk about the terminal rates soon. And then it starts to drop off. So we're not there yet, but that's a chart that we'll have to bring up in the future. We also know that when the Federal Reserve gets its last hike in, which is expected to potentially now be June, generally when we're inverted, which we're heavily inverted, and that's not about to change, markets start to lean towards the sell side. So just some stuff to keep in the back of your mind when it comes to you know the data and the things that have happened in the past and whether that's lining up with your technical analysis and your other confluence. Remember, this channel is built around ideally 
bringing in technical analysis along with confluence stories. That's really what you're trying to do here to stack the odds in your favor. So what happened in the last 24 hours? Well, we saw the resurgence of hyper growth stocks, the retail sales numbers, the stock market was like, well, that's pretty good. The economy looks pretty good. Yeah, but it does mean also higher interest rates for longer guys. But anyway, the rotation was there. You can see there was no real heavy emphasis on the defensive sectors. For anyone that's trading, anything to do with earnings at this point, do remember there's still some big earnings coming out. And these are the implied volatility moves coming around those. VIX, I'm not going to talk too much about it. It went down, makes sense, market went up. Overall, we're looking for only one zone with the VIX. If we do end up breaking a heavy high on the stock market, do watch out for 16.37 on the VIX, set an alert, see the reaction there. We'll be talking about crypto as well because crypto broke out of a key zone. And we'll talk about what I thought was going to happen and now one of the key levels that I think everybody needs to be looking at because $100,000 calls already being made now on Bitcoin. I tweeted about before. People are getting hyperactive again on those particular ones. So the terminal rate, that is the rate that the Federal Reserve will reach at some point this year and then stop hiking, has now gone to 5.23. This is now an all-time high for this current rally. So you can see that this is the type of thing that's at risk. If we look at the US two-year, the US two-year is approaching some of those highest points of all time. And also here we have the US 10-year, which is starting to tick back up as well. The difference though really should be considered the US 02Y. So always remember putting in 02Y versus the US 10 year, or of course, one of my other favorites is the three month versus the 10 year. And what you'll notice is the inversion 1.217, that's heavily inverted. Now, if you go out and you pull back history, what you might notice is that we are now at an incredible inversion. I think this has to make you really consider how much FOMO you have in these markets. Now, you know the hardest thing in trading and investing is having the temperament to be able to be patient. And anyone, and I do encourage anybody that's been trading for three, four, five, 10, 20 years, put it in the comments down below to help other traders out there to understand how important it is to have patience. Here's the difference between pro traders and retail traders. It's not necessarily their predictive skills. What it instead is, is recognizing when they have the edge or the replication in their system to be able to strike. It's their timing. They say timing is everything. In pro trading, it is not the rep, it is not the ability to necessarily predict, but it's instead the ability to recognize a situation where they may have statistical edge. Right now, this is heavily inverted. The bonds market probably knows more than we do about long-term market action. The stock market can go up and down and fly all around, but never ignore bonds. Bonds, realistically, these guys trade risk. You know, they know what's up with the risk side and they can be disconnected from reality. So remember, fear and greed are stocks. When greed is good, everyone jumps on it. Warren Buffett even says that. However, we do need to recognize that some bonds markets are starting to weaken. Now, are there opportunities for other traders? Well, technically, potentially there are. I mean, TLT, which is Treasury Long-Term Yields, if you believe the economy is in a soft landing and everything's all going to be good and they're going to cut rates and everything's all good, well, TLT is starting to come down to much more attractive levels. So we're seeing bonds coming back into our golden pocket here in terms of Treasuries. Now, what about high yield junk? Well, high yield junk continues to remain low while we're seeing stock markets hovering around these highs. That's not good. That means there's a huge disconnect between the risks in the market and also, of course, the current market conditions. That's something that we have to think about and you have to pay attention to. When we move over to the US dollar, did things react the way that you wish they would after retail sales? Well, this is where it gets funny. Certain things did, you know, gold reacted the way you thought it would, copper reacted the way generally you would think it would, and even the US dollar reacted the way you thought it would. It went up. The US dollar should go up. If we see rates rising, that means that US dollars are in more demand because, of course, if you put them in the bank, you're going to earn a little bit more money. Now, if we have a look at a fib here of this current run, you'll notice that if it does get down to super deep levels, it would come into these 103s. But at this point, it closed above the previous highs. It has a nice 
potential storyline here of this becoming accumulation. The only thing that can really stop it in its tracks now to reach some of the key levels we talked about, which is 105.25, would be a huge rejection wick candle today that then pushes it back in. And then we start questioning whether this is part of a Wyckoff false break. At this point, US dollars look pretty strong and we expect probably dips to be purchased and hopefully we move on to our 105.25. So things are looking pretty good for the US dollar overall. What about gold? Well, gold dropped and it continued to drop. And obviously it's sitting in this very nice first demand zone at this point. Well, gold hates yield increase. So as long as yield is increasing, gold will theoretically decline and US dollars should theoretically increase. So these are the types of synergies that are going on in these markets. So gold remains mostly bearish at this stage. We haven't seen breakout to the upside for any reason. And it's only very, very, very small timeframes that you can make cases for slight bullishness. Of course, you do have this little accumulation here. It's breaking up, but there's plenty of sell levels in the future should gold get to these zones. So again, remain within the trend. And the trend is currently down for gold on the two hours and most likely four hours. Now, what about copper? Well, copper went down and it rallied off our trend line, the trend line here that we've always wondered about. I would have liked copper to sell and hold the low. So I'm looking, I'm still negative on copper. Nothing's changed. This is, as I mentioned a few weeks ago, my strongest technical that I was looking at on the charts. And the reason it was the strongest technical was because it made the most amount of sense, regardless of how everybody else was looking at tech and running Tesla and all these other things. A lot of those are hard to figure out with risk reward being the correct kind of parameters. Of course, hindsight's 2020, and it means that you could say, oh, I bought a call for the week and it went up lots and look at me, I made so much money. But you've got to think, you know, staying in the game for a long time. So copper, obviously, you know, I made a, made a bit of a decision that technically I believe top copper was short up here. And so far it's been short. This is the first big issue for copper. And at the moment, we're looking at this hopefully being a distribution towards a sell-off. A nice close under here can move us towards that 375 level. And again, it works into some other data that we've got going on with copper as well. So yeah, next 24 hours is going to be very important for this. But what I want to mention is, yes, it's not the same large move that others are, but it depends on how you've taken it. If you take it and it's implied vol is quite small, you could technically make a ton of money off a small move. So all things are relative. And today I want to discuss that along with these bonds traders. You know, bonds traders are starting to say, well, they're questioning the economy. Stocks traders are absolutely not questioning the economy. Over to oil, we remain trapped within the two key zones that we've already marked out. So nothing new there. And we'll move to natural gas, which a lot of you are starting to trade. Now, heaps of people are trying to buy this saying it's the low is in. I've still got an alert set down here and that's sitting around that kind of 236. I'd like to see a low get taken to prove one of Wyckoff's accumulation styles to stop a freight train. And this is a freight train that would go in the wrong direction. Generally speaking, it takes time and the early people usually get wiped. So what I mean by that is if they don't have the correct plays in place, they will get their stop losses hit. So be careful here on natural gas. However, it's starting to look better. Let's move over to the culprit number one. And look, I'll admit a few things. Number one, obviously, I thought there'd be a reaction off here. We did end up getting one that came down. Number two, CPI came in hot and core retail sales came in hot. And this has become a bit of a squeeze play. Basically, the options, the overwhelming amounts of retail traders are pushing Tesla higher. Remember, it's 13 to 15% of the current throughput traffic on options. So retail traders are absolutely smashing it. Now we find ourselves kind of at a, I would say, relatively interesting zone. The previous high expected weekly options high range has also been hit. And yeah, the reaction here is going to be important for this stock. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it continues to rally and it will turn bad. That's, that's almost a surety because eventually these types of rallies always turn bad. You can't have these V shapes without massive dumps and big pullbacks eventually. The question is timing. Have we seen significant weakness on Tesla yet? The reality is no. Have we seen replication yet towards the short side? The reality is not yet. We do have key levels to set. And of course, we want to see reactions off those zones and we'll be following it every step of the way. However, it hasn't broken key levels at this stage. We've still got it 
kind of at these critical zones. Now, is it possible this could create a double top and do this? Absolutely it is. It just hasn't done it yet. So yeah, for day traders, they'll be very interested in the reactions of this zone, this zone, and this zone. That'll be where you probably see the most amount of opportunity. And for buying dip players, they're looking really at those 190s and pullbacks from this current high. Let's move over to the option side. You can see why it's a problem. 250 calls, 220 calls, 225 calls, 200 calls. Everyone's all over this. And it's just, it's huge amounts of puts and huge amount of calls stuck within a really tight zone. So it makes sense why it's trading higher. It's getting a lot of squeeze on it. Now, this has had huge throughput during the week. It's still got a max pain of 175, which is quite a lot of downside by Friday for the perfect, perfect Wall Street close to get them the most amount of money. But I'm not sure it can get that done. So remember, don't try to target max pain. If you see weakness, it can help you have confidence to be in that trade. It's about having, you know, let's say five to six separate reasons and then even up to eight, even up to 10, and then making sure you have four or five of those when you're placing these trades to create that replication in trading. Apple still remains in the zone, still coming off those highs that we talked about and the reactions a few days ago. Nvidia still at criticals. You can see where it's trading. Bullish closes do tend to lead to that kind of further upside thought process, but still at a critical zone for Nvidia. So as it's kind of spiking these highs, what you might notice is it's still finding, you know, decent selling pressure around this key critical zone we marked out. So yeah, certainly still one to watch for day traders. And it's just so imperative for bears that markets actually start to sell off here. Now there are some markets that are actually reacting okay. I mean, here's an engulf here from the XJO. This is the ASX 200. So we're looking at some world markets here before we get into the US equities. And you'll notice that there is some strong rejections coming off the top. You also know this is a massive supply. So it expect you expected the XJO to find weakness here. We talked about that. But yeah, at the moment, we don't have exactly, you know, a huge turnaround. We've seen the right signs for weakness. But we need the US to also start to drop if that's going to happen. UK 100 continues to absolutely throttle the short sellers. Remember, 90% of basically retail traders on CFDs are currently short this. They're short the DAX. They're short the France 40. They're getting mutilated. It's not, not a good time for them. Let's move over to CQQ. Uh, yep, we're still at the rejection zone. And again, we're basically just seeing some weakness coming through here. It's a possible head and shoulders kind of setting up, but yeah, just shows you that we're at a critical level. The Dow also stuck within our trend line, or this is the triangle at this point, and we haven't seen it moved out. The Qs, here's the rally that we're getting. This is the reaction point that we saw last time. Certainly we'll be watching that very closely. And I want to come over to the US 100. So that's the NASDAQ futures. In each of the weeks so far, we've seen weak rejections off this zone, this critical level. Still a few days to go. But this is something that's pretty imperative. We need to see rejection weeks. If we get another rejection week, that can really detail some very significant things. And I want to go down to the daily. Notice this. We have not had any daily closes above this current zone. So today's market trade leading into the PPI could be very important for whether this thing really wants to crack out. Super important day for it at a critical zone. But as usual, let's use the S&P 500 to figure it out. Extreme zone number one coming back into the zone at the moment. The futures are in there. The 4163 technical gap still sits in this area. So that's going to be a very interesting level for us to target and have a look at. If we move over to the SPY, we've got expected weekly options highs and lows. We're not even near the high yet for the expected weekly options high. But if we do have massive rallies, this could be sell-off zones. And remember, this is where the market, if it's setting a trap, we know this is supply at this stage. So we know that the sellers, the bigger sellers have placed sell positions there. If the market is setting a true trap as per Wyckoff style, it will make a new high and then instantly reverse it within a day or so. Now, once that occurs and you see it come back down, if it then swings, we will know what happens and we can basically say that's a pretty defined top and most likely rejections are in play. At the moment, you are scalping and day trading within this structure because it's very fast and very quick. Again, I want to sit in the dailies. Rejection, 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 currently at it. 
So we are at a critical zone. We have not had a daily close above this level. Again, just like the US 100, we're at that critical level. If we go over here, you can see the reactions that have occurred. In general, we've been making a series of lower highs or lower peaks. If we skip all of those, get a 4180, 4180, 4190, that's going to be a critical level for SPY traders to see instant rejections. Bears sit here. We know that because we can see they've been there before. For the bulls to get control, they need to close big candles and then follow it up with other ones. They do not want bearish ones to then potentially make the Wyckoff distribution. So there's a lot of rallies coming in here. Both CPI and retail sales were hot. The initial reactions technically ended up leading to shorts and then both of them were squeezed out. So we're coming into the critical levels and these are some of the big levels to watch. 41.60 to 41.80, a super critical zone to have on your charts. Let's now refresh the 17th. So let's have a look at the options expiration for the 17th. This is the third week options expiration. I believe it's a huge part of the problem when we're talking about why markets are not able to go down correctly. Max Payne is sitting currently at 4.02 and stock price is at 4.14. So theoretically, if Wall Street want this to be the most profitable time for themselves, they might want to put the markets down a little bit. Poor 375 puts and 380 puts, they're going to expire. Worthless, you would think. And these 400 puts, notice the calls on the SPY are totally different to Tesla. Tesla is like super bullish. NVIDIA, super bullish, crazy amounts of super bullish candles. But when you're looking at SPY, it's mostly still puts and it remains puts in March as well. So it's hard to go down too much. 420 is the call level wall this week and 400 is the put level wall. So anything in here is theoretically smiley face for the big players. However, you know, if they want to get the best amount of money, 402 at this stage is theoretically the best level. Now, this one, I didn't expect it to wipe it so easily. So, of course, I was talking about recently how when it's breached down here that I expected the market to rally, which I did. I expected it to find some issue in here and then short off. Now, this is why you need to have the patience to react to some switch in there. You've got to go down. You, firstly, yes, set alerts. Okay, I've set alert. How do you then activate that trade? Well, you need to see some type of turn. In this case, Bitcoin just went wild. Now, it was gone wild and it's gone to a new high and it's done it on one of those classic Bitcoin style moves. Super energetic and everyone's coming out. 100K Bitcoin. Uh, there's another pretty interesting theory, which is basically that after 800 days after the high, you see huge rallies, which are still a little bit further away, and we've got those critical zones. So what I'm thinking is still watch reactions around here. So if Bitcoin does push a little bit higher, 25,189, I'm incredibly interested to see, and I mean incredibly interested to see what Bitcoin does around here. I want to know where the bears sit just on these levels. We're still in supply. So nothing changes there. This is still theoretically levels where I could see bigger players taking profit. And although it's broken out, what I think is very interesting about this breakout is how hyperactive everybody is about it. Hey, great, I'm glad it's going up. That's awesome. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's still at a critical. So people don't seem to be taking that into consideration. And that's always the time when you've got to be the most cautious in markets. Let's move over to the news coming out, moving forward. Of course, we know we've got the core PPI at 8.30 a.m. Could this be the straw that actually breaks the camel's back? It's possible. It's one of the key levels to be watching and one of the key zones. And then we have really the end of the show. So thank you very much for watching. If you're interested in getting access to a few free trading cheat sheets and also our upcoming monthly newsletter with hardcore data in it, which will be pretty cool, then subscribe to this one and I'll put you in the list. And then of course, follow us on our other socials if you're interested. You can also join our private community where we do private daily streams and quick snapshots of the day ahead for the majors. Thanks so much guys for watching. If you've enjoyed the content, subscribe, smash the like button. We'll see you in the other one. And there's no doubt by the way, that this is a difficult time in trading. I mentioned before something that I wanted to just quickly reiterate again. When it comes to trading, let's say a short position in these areas, 
the way that you have to do it is totally different to what most retail traders will do. Most retail traders will short it with a CFD or a futures contract or even a short dated put. That's okay, but you've got to understand that timing is very difficult sometimes when you're trying to pick topping levels. So you've got to also think about time distance. Most of the time when I talk to professional traders, they usually use three month or multi-month kind of option positions. And you might say, well, I get ripped apart if I buy a multi-month put. Well, that's why they use techniques such as spreads. Now, I'm not saying you have to go do things like that, but I just want you to think differently about the way that you apply shorting positions. I've seen some pretty horrible ones recently, unfortunately, and that's because people are not thinking about the instrument selection. There's also crediting. There's all sorts of things that you can do. You can make money from markets totally different ways than other people do it. And just like I've said, you know, recently when I've honed in on copper from a technical level, it's a totally different market. No one else is talking about it, but it's one that I believe that at that point, at that time, I had edge in. So I hope that helps. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.